There are many out there that think that Nintendo Switch is priced too high. There are some pretty good reasons for this. First off, the PS4 and Xbox One are, in fact, cheaper. They're more powerful systems, the system doesn't come with a pack-in, the last two Nintendo consoles did, and people believed the rumors. A lot of people said that it was going to be 250 and then everyone was disappointed when it wasn't. While some of these are good points, I think that the 299 price tag is justified. How come? Well, you're getting two controllers with the system. There's a lot of tech in these controllers. Each controller has its own Bluetooth radio. Uh, on the right Joy-Con, there's NFC, so you can use Amiibo and Skylanders and whatever else people come up with later on. Each one has HD rumble, so now you're not paying for one rumble, you're paying for two. Uh, this could turn out to be nonsense, or it might be amazing. A lot of people that have used it said that it is the real deal, but only time will tell. And you're getting the option to take this console on the go very easily. You're getting a screen, no TV needed. I think this all adds up to a very justifiable price of $299, even without a pack-in. That being said, I think Nintendo could have sold this system for $229 and made even more money. Now, at this point, I fully expect people to be wondering about my math skills, but rest assured, this is going to make sense in a little bit. First off, let's take a look at how Nintendo is marketing the system. Nintendo is a very conservative company that also likes to take risks. Those don't usually go hand in hand, so they like to take risks with a plan B in their pocket just in case things don't go the way they anticipate. They are saying the Switch is a console first, handheld second. I think this is because Nintendo is looking to the 3DS to save them if things go awry. They've done this before. When the DS was announced, they said the Game Boy wasn't going anywhere, the DS was going to be the third pillar, and we all saw what happened there. The DS gained massive adoption, and Nintendo washed its hands of the, of the GBA. Let's look at the comparative power between the Wii U and the Switch. The Switch is definitely more powerful. We can see this in the frame rates and resolution that Breath of the Wild for Wii U is pushing compared to the Switch version of the same game. But in passing, the non-discerning gamer might not even notice the difference unless looking at both at the same time. Now let's compare it to the 3DS. This is a massive difference in power. We're going from 240p to 720 minimum, and if you connect it to a TV, 1080p. That's a really great selling point. However, $300 is kind of expensive for a handheld system. So, what should Nintendo do? Well, if you sell this thing cheaper, you've got to cut something out of the equation. What could Nintendo remove in order to lower the price? It comes with a few things. It comes with a tablet, the dock, two Joy-Cons, two jo or a Joy-Con grip, and two Joy-Con straps. In this list, I see two things that are not absolutely essential to playing it. The tablet is essential. The dock is not. The Joy-Cons, both of them, are essential. The Joy-Con grip is not. And I think that the Joy-Con strap is essential because it makes playing this thing with the controller sideways a little more comfortable. Of all of the non-essential things, uh, the Grimp is basically a hunk of plastic with some cheap LEDs in it. I think it's there to make some games a little more comfortable to play, depending on what kind of game you're playing. It's probably insanely cheap to make, so cutting it out probably isn't going to lower the price of the system enough to make a difference. May as well leave it in. The dock, however, is totally unnecessary. You can get every ounce of fun out of this console without the dock. Sure, there's a lot of people who are primarily going to play this on their TV, myself included. Hell, some Switches may never even leave their dock. If we look at how much they are charging for the dock, though, it seems like a pretty hefty part of the sticker shock, $90. What if Nintendo showed a little less trepidation about ditching the 3DS? What if they said, screw the Wii U, screw the 3DS, we are going all in on Switch, we're taking a risk, and we are going to own it. Then they sell the Switch in two different bundles. I know this might confuse some buyers having different versions of the system, but hear me out. A portable bundle. $229.99. 
comes without the dock. A TV bundle, $299.99, comes with the dock. This gives customers a lot more flexibility. Hey, I'm only going to play my Switch on the train. Okay, get the portable bundle. You just saved $70. Uh, I'm, I'm only going to play my Switch on the TV. Here's your TV bundle with the dock. By buying them at the same time, you just saved some money. I'm not really sure how I'm going to play my Switch. All right, fine. Buy the portable bundle now and pick up the dock later, or for a little bit less money, jump right into the TV bundle now. Doing this would have dissipated a lot of the sticker shock that people were experiencing. It would have prevented a lot of bad press that Nintendo had received since unveiling the Switch, and a lot of that bad press is causing people to not pre-order it. Not all of it, of course. You can't get rid of all bad press because you can't please everyone, and some people just aren't happy unless they're angry. And in the long run, more people would end up buying this system at lunch, launch, not launch, if they can find it, meaning a faster-growing install base and happier third-party developers. For every person that gets the portable bundle and then later upgrades to the TV bundle by buying a dock for $90, Nintendo just made 20 extra dollars off that sale. So, what do you think? Is this something that Nintendo should have done? Let me know. 